Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to talk about drawing screw heads at different levels of detail. So this came up recently in a live model we did. We do live models on our YouTube channel every Friday at noon mountain time if you haven't joined us. Um, talking about adding screw heads to a model, like how much detail do we need to go in there? And we kind of came up with this middle, middle, I would call it like, you know, level three out of five, I don't know. Um, this little bit of detail in there uh, that worked really well for what we were modeling for. Um, just to exclaim up front, or disclaim up front, what I'm not gonna do here is draw the entire screw. If I'm just showing that there's a connector on the, on the top, on the surface of a material, I don't see the reason to go in and draw spirals of the screws. Even if you save them as a component, can just drop them in. It's a lot of extra geometry to add to a model. And one of the things we're gonna talk about here is modeling properly for the level of detail you're actually modeling. There's very few situations where modeling all the screws, all, all the threads and everything going into a, a piece of material makes sense. If you're doing an exploded view or a cut through view, something like that, it's illustrative how a screw works, that makes sense. Otherwise, it is a lot of geometry that takes up space in your model that you don't need. So just want to disclaim that at the beginning, that I'm not going to go into that. We're going to talk about putting screws on the material, representing connectors inside your model based on different levels of detail. So let's go ahead and hop and do that right now. Okay, so I created this little, I don't know, this is a piece of material, maybe this is wood, maybe this is metal, this is, I don't know, it's something. And then each of these is a separate component. So we're gonna go through here and see I have screw one through screw five, and we're gonna look at different levels of detail. All right, so our first level of detail, let's see what the, the lowest level of detail I can do to this circle to make it look like there's a connector here. And I'm done. If you're way zoomed out, something like this, um, that might be enough detail to just show that there's a connector there. You might not need more than that. In fact, having a 24-sided circle might be excessive. You might be able to get away with eight or six. Again, keeping your model light and modeling it based on what you're actually outputting for. If this is just a small little piece inside my model and I just wanna make sure that they know that they have to put five holes there, that might be good enough. So you might not have to go further than that. Let's go a little bit further than that. Let's say I wanna actually represent a Phillips head uh, screw here. I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna draw a couple lines. I'm just using the, the breaks in uh, the circle, the edges there, to just go ahead and we'll put a little plus shape in there, delete this out of here, and that might be my level two. So if this is like a flush wood screw, that's probably good enough. There's no reason to go in and model like, you know, the taper of the head or the threads or anything like that, if when you're done, it's just flat and that's all that's showing anyhow. Don't model more than you have to, unless there's a reason for it. I said, if my, my next view is this screw like coming out of the wood and showing how it goes in, that's one thing. But if it's a flush wood screw, this might be more than enough. Okay, going a little bit beyond that, let's go a little bit, little bit further. Um, depending on the type of connector I have, I might want to do something like this. I'm going to go ahead and offset this, and then I'm going to use move to move this center face vertically. I'm just going to pull it up something like that. And then I'm going to use erase with the modifier key to smooth that edge. I didn't hit the modifier key there. There we go. That gives us a real quick, simple, super easy domed over look. By softening it like that, I get that it's, it's not just, it's not like up and then flat. By softening it, I gave it a little bit of a rounded over. So again, depending on how I'm looking at this and depending on my style too, if I go up to view edge styles and I was to turn off edges, and we have to, in this case, we have to turn off profiles too, I can tell that there's a connector here where I can't with these 2D pieces over here. So that is a quick and easy, yes, there, there is, you know, like, I don't know, 25 faces here, something like that. But I could use a lower count circle if I wanted to use a 12-sided circle and do the same thing. 
and get the same bang for about half the polygons. I'll go to view and turn my, my edge styles back on. That's good. All right, so we can go a little bit further than that too. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm gonna offset, I'll come into this one, offset. I'm gonna grab this and I'm going to bring it vertically again. So it gives me that little bit of a rounded over and then I'm gonna combine that with what we did on our uh, LOD2 over here. And I'm just gonna draw a couple lines like that, a couple lines like that, do some erasing. And then selectively, modifier key, smoothing, like that, gives me another level. In fact, I could probably do something too, where if I want to come in here, I could probably just push that down a little bit. Ooh, there we go, look at that. No question what this is, right? I know that that is a Phillips head, maybe it's like a, a machine screw, something like that, that's sitting up proud of the material, it's not flush like the head of a wood screw, um, I can really tell what it is pretty easy. So that is a, I mean, just, just a couple more faces than what I had right here, and I can really tell what it is. All right, so those have all been good, but let's go ahead and take this to its eventual uh, finish here, where I'm gonna come over into this last one, and we're gonna go a little bit further still. I'm gonna draw a line across this circle to break it in half. I'm gonna grab this half circle and I'm going to rotate it, a copy of it straight up. I'm gonna grab these two tools, follow me and click right here. All right, I'm gonna draw a quick line right here. That's gonna close up the bottom of that uh, dome to make it a solid. Now, there's some, this quick note before we go further. If you're doing something with like a rivet, so, so I have some riveted geometry, um, I have a riveting model going on. Um, I might want to just use something like this half dome. And so it just took a couple seconds to make. And I could make this a component and drop it all over my model, representing those rivets. This maybe is a little high, high quality for that sort of thing. You may want to do lower, maybe like I said, a 12 or an eight sided circle to do it, to give you a little less geometry. If I show my hidden geometry right now, I got a lot of pieces here. So this is repeated, you know, a couple hundred times over the model. That's gonna add up. But this geometry is pretty simple, pretty easy way to, you know, show something like a mechanical connection. Um, right now, for a screw head, it's a little tall. So I'll go ahead and grab it and I will use scale to squash that down. There we go, that's a pretty good looking screw head right now. Obviously it's missing something. I'm gonna turn off my hidden geometry. We need to go put a put an X on it. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna draw a little X on the ground. And then I will take that and I'll find the middle here on this side, middle here on this side, go to where they meet, and then modifier copy, modifier rotate, excuse me, a copy 90 degrees. And then I'll take that and pull it in 3D space. I'm gonna grab that, make that a group. And now we need to align it with this group over here. So I'm gonna grab it by this, the middle of one of these edges and bring it right up to that point there. That's the far side. I'm gonna pull it from the middle here, hold down shift and align it with right there. You see how it does turn translucent when uh, the geometry being moved gets in the way. Uh, then drag it up just ever so slightly, just a little bit, just so I have a little bit of material down here below. Because then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use solid tools. So I have that's a solid, that's a solid. I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna say, trim that out of the screw head. And then when I move that off, that is, you know, undisputably a Phillips head screw. So obviously, how big you make your X is gonna impact how big the grooves are in here, uh, which is really gonna come down to scale. This is a teeny, teeny, tiny screw. That's probably pretty accurate. If this is a big screw, then that is way too, too large for that. Um, but there you go. So depending on the usage, you know, a simple circle, circle with an X, simple dome, dome with an X, or the full-on half sphere with the grooves cut out of it, 
may be what you want to use, regardless of how of which one you decide on, creating it and saving it as a component will allow you to take it and use it over and over again in the model. Each of these, of course, is going to be subsequently larger and larger. So if I come into this and I select everything, it's 25 entities. I come into this one, select everything, 37. Come over here, 97. Come over here, 157. And then finally, 358. So if this, I, and I, I'm sorry to keep stressing this, but this is kind of the importance of the model. If this is this big, having all that details, having 300 times, or no, it was like, I'm sorry, what's math? 1,200 times what was the circle was is not worth it. If you don't actually need it in your model, a circle works better. But those are some options. So five different levels of detail for a Phillips head screw head. I hope all that made sense. Um, I really wanted to talk about different levels of detail. I think one of the, the key abilities, something that separates a person who plays around in SketchUp and somebody who's really a proficient modeler is the ability to model to the level of detail that's appropriate for that model. So if you're doing just a, a high level, simple schematic drawing, it doesn't necessarily make sense to go in and like put a whole lot of detail in if it's, if it's really conceptual or something like that. Um, if you're outputting this, outputting a, a 3D model, it's gonna print this big and the screws are gonna be like, you know, this large on it. Don't bother with all that extra detail. Little bump's gonna be perfect. Model properly for the level of detail you actually need for your final product. It's gonna be super important. And this is an example of how you can vary your details based on that level of detail. I hope that helped. If you like that, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos each and every week. And you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most important though, please leave us a comment down below. Have you done something like this? Have you got caught or stung by not doing something like this? Do you have some other ideas you think would make good skill builders? We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.